Well, hello everybody, we are back and today I'm gonna do something more complicated. What what is what I'm trying to do? First of all, I'm gonna be working partially on Windows 10, but I'm also gonna do some transfer of these files to a Linux machine to run the actual doc. In fact, I'm gonna turn on the other computer for that. And, and the reason I'm gonna do this is because I've been asked how to run docking in serial for several ligands. That is having, as is said here, a receptor, this 1AW1, it's a monomer of the triose phosphate isomerase that I will dock against phosphoglycolic acid, which is a transition state uh, analog, as well as uh, glycerol triphosphate or dehydroxyacetone phosphate. These two are ligands for this enzyme. Uh, I could run the three dockings in three different computers or send them to a cluster and run them one at a time, but unattended. That, that is the goal here. As you can see, uh, only the one receptor and one ligand are prepared and these two other uh, ligands are not yet prepared so i'm gonna i'm gonna do that prepare them uh, well i also try to narrate what are the other steps or rather spend some time here enough that you know what's going on so first of all calling up my powershell there's no other way to do it in windows changing up <laughs> changing directories carefully mm -hmm. prepare ligand if I remember correctly actually I don't remember how these are set up if they already have hydrogens they do I can probably go and do minus um, ligand p3p output P D B Q T and the default oh, you know I, I wanna cancel it yes terminate job um, verbose no change atomic coordinates mm, I, I gotta check it just make sure that it's Yes, only few hydrogens are retained, and that is because those are the ones that are going to be able to perform hydrogen bonding. Let's let's go with that. I'm going to repeat this for that was it. Let's do this for the <laughs> the hydroxy acetone phosphate and phosphate. Now, why preparing these files on Windows and then switching to Linux? The answer is kind of simple. Um, Windows do have the capacity, the capability of performing batch file operations. However, I don't know how to do them on Windows. Uh, Bina, yeah, I'll talk about Bina. Bina, Ages ago, I, I'm not sure exactly where, maybe it's in the tutorial or in the frequently asked questions, does have a little script on to how to perform exactly the task I uh, want to do, which is running a script to dock several ligands one at a time on a pen. Watching features, difference to protein, 60 bit machine. Um, <gasps> Whoa, it's not here.
here it is, yes. So here in the section of virtual screening, you may find it by yourself in this in the Vina website. It says that you may choose some of the tools listed under our software to perform the virtual screening. Alternatively, if you are familiar with shell scripting, which is what we're gonna do, you can do a virtual screening without them. The examples below assume that Bash is your shell, so Linux. It says here that you could be able to use the Windows scripting language. Honestly, I don't know enough. I spent a few minutes trying to see if, if I could grok it, but I gave up. Why? Because, because honestly, if you are going to perform a very big screening, a virtual screening, you are likely to do it on a cluster. And clusters mostly are going to ex be exposed to scientists using an Ubuntu or CentOS uh, interface, Uni Linux. So, uh, here, here is the shell script. First of all, make, let's make something clear. We need to have these parameters, which are, which is the receptor with the right name, the center, the size of the grid, as well as what you want as a return. But this is just an example. If you click here, this is the script. This is pretty much what you will find in any script made for Unix. Uh, shebang exclamation point space bin bash this is the interpreter for the commands here is what this is going to be a loop for f for a each ligand with the name PD, with the extension pdbqt perform uh, setting the name to the name of the ligand uh, display a message saying that we are processing that ligand create a folder for set Largan, and in this case run Bina, reading the configuration file, reading the F as a ligand, setting out the result inside the folder you created for the ligand, and saving the log for the result in the folder created for that ligand. This, this is what we need, and it's going to be reading the list of PDBQT ligands and performing the operation, which is the docking. You can, uh, I'm going to show it again, you can get it on the FAC for Vina. Uh, it works as is described here for Vina, but I, it's something that I have been adapting for years to run on uh, any Unix machine. Here is an example from a, from a, um, uh, this is a cluster running uh, I can't remember the name, is Slurm, where I call the compilers that were used to compile ADFR, ADFR, call the path for ADFR, and then in a similar fashion to the script, creating a folder, which actually is not necessary here, as well as running the docking. Here, in this instance, I would have to replace this F here for the ligands. Actually, I'm going to do it before copying it uh, outside. I'm going to do it also here because this is going to be the name of the output. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to remove the comparison because only the first ligand is going to be this. And we are going to run this on a machine with eight CPUs. I guess I got to check this path. So let's do that. In fact, I am going to erase all of this because this is specific for the Slurm cluster. Mm -hmm. Let's connect. It looks like I don't have ADFR there, but we can easily correct that. First, let's move the files. This, I will edit there. Uh, save. Uh, 
I'm going to put it on the desktop, script test. Uh, I guess I will download a download ADFR. Without planning it, this become this became um, an installation example. Yeah, let's go for this. Oh, that's the installer app. Uh, well, whichever. Both will be fine. Oh, this is by the way Bitwise uh, SSH client. I, I really like it. It's very useful for these situations, as you can see. I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to put it on up. Mm -hmm. CD desktop. Chmod ADF, oh sorry, ADFR. Uh, let me double check what are the instructions. Install, I guess, something like this. Uh, well, let's let's try to run this. I, if it uses a graphical interface, I may may be out of luck. Uh, no, we want opt. ADFR. Uh, you don't have permissions. Okay, well that, let's let's do that with permissions. That doesn't look like an installation. You know, I guess I'm gonna go with the turbo. What do we need? I think it's gonna ask us. No. no I'm gonna I'm gonna start over because I really wanna set these flags. Here they recommend where indicate with minus d where to install it at minus zero, probably for the type of compilation. Yes, that's it. Minus d minus d opt a d f r minus c zero and let's give it permissions. That's it. Excellent. Yes, academic installation. And this is our queue. Mm -hmm. And now, this is what we need. I should be able to remove this folder. CD script test, more slower. We have to change this opt ADFR here. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna use nano. If that if that actually work, first let's try ADFR. That works. We have PDBQTs and and the name of the receptor. So this should be set to go. Now here on this terminal, the colors indicate certain properties of the files. I need to make this script 
executable with this command chmod755 and now I can use dot slash slurm I'm going to send it to the background and there it goes <laughs> okay I made um, a mistake and the mistake is that I'm trying to run a docking using a pdbqt file yeah I, I, I should have thought about this the, for this I need a target file here this one so let's create it why not over here on this Windows machine I can open my AGFR and I can use the PGA the phosphoglycolic acid as the target or the reference on to which to map what is the region that we're gonna dock which is this I, there you can see with this button we can center that is the reference ligand I'm going to pad the cell to 8. This should be more than enough. Let's get the pockets. I'm going to ignore that one. This is what I'm going to use. All lot of files and generate target file. Computing affinity maps. Now, to be clear, all of these ligands are going to be very, very similar. Uh, what's going to change? Probably the position of some double bonds here, but they all have phosphate and a couple of carbons and an acid region. <laughs> oh, of course, I'm using a lot of CPU here, so this is going to take a little while. Well, I should stop using CPU for other things. OBS uses a lot. This one uses a lot. there here we are you can close this and now we have this TRG file which we're going to copy over here to the remote computer uh, and I'm going to erase this this file yes, as well as this one copy the target file okay, and repeat the test okay, okay I I'm not entirely sure. Okay, well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting an error for this PDBQT, so I'm going to erase it. But I'm not entirely sure that is the case. Let's try again. Aha, this log summary. I, I am going to bet that I'm doing, that I did something wrong in the script. This part, I don't know whether there's an A. Maybe that was my typo.
Okay, there, there's a mistake because clearly it's looking for names that don't exist. So let's fix that. And the way I see that, I guess that I shouldn't have some name here. This one. That. So you see, using scripts is not that hard. It's gonna be a little bit hard if it's your first time, but for me, creating the scripts for Windows and then debugging them will have been kind of painful. Okay, so again, I made a mistake, which was not erasing those folders at the bottom. Let's do it again. There they go. Mm -hmm. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. Uh, I hope I actually said, yeah, eight cores. That should be fine. Uh, 500, maybe that's a bit much. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna cancel it. I wanna have to erase these two files, well, file and folder that were created. And I'm gonna reduce those. <gasps> I didn't stop it. Yeah, sorry about that. Troubleshooting. So I'm going to reduce this to 50 and this is 25 million, two and a half million it's going to be for this test. Mm -hmm. I think my problem is that I actually didn't cancel it. Okay, now it's cancelled. Let's make sure I erase all leftovers. Okay, eight CPUs, 50 and two and a half millions. This should be quote unquote easy. Yeah, there we go. Now, if everything went right, which I hope, well, uh, you should start noticing a couple of things. First, the way the ligands are being processed is a uh, machine dependent alphabetical order. That is, if you have ligands with starting their names with numbers, those will, those will go first in the docking and then alphabetical order. And from there will be alphanumerical order, shorter numbers first. Is that right? I don't remember for Unix. Maybe it's starting with one and then with two and so on until you reach the largest numbers. But still, it's going to be sorted like that by the name of the ligand file. When this docking is done with the hydro dehydroxy acetone phosphate, the next is going to be glycerol dehydrophosphate, G, and finally PGA, phosphoglycolic acid. These are smallish ligands and they have limited degrees of freedom, so they should be fairly fast. Actually, I should have added, and I don't know if I can still do that, added some sort of control. If I have any. I don't seem to have any handy. But as you can see, the docking already proceeded. Oh, look, I could probably add a phenol. Let's see if by any chance it still gets read by the docking. It already finished the first ligand, the hydroacetone phosphate, up here. One result, minus 5.3, uh, all of the 50 in the same spot. And in a second, we will have glycerol dehydrophosphate. Did I send this to the background? Yeah, with an ampersand, okay. I do not recommend try to do this 
joking that I did adding a ligand after starting the the process because more often than not it's not going to be red so if you have a large number of ligands you may end up not knowing which were processed and which were not uh, and you don't want to do that you want to have all of your ligands ready to do them in one go and if you miss one batch it up for another run afterwards that way you avoid missing positive hits Yeah, it, it's not, well, phenolis could be the next one. Notice that for glyceraldehyde triphosphate, we have a few more results. Probably the difference to, between dehydro, dehydroxyacetone is that double bond, it's missing on glyceraldehyde. And we get, for, due to the well, quantity of freedom more, we have a the spread of the results. But most of them, 40, that would be like, 80%, roughly 50% fall in this first category. The equilibrium, if we were to go by these results, will be shifted uh, by, uh, the, uh, by the, probably by the enthalpy, but, but I'm exaggerating here on this interpretation. The enthalpy will be driving the equilibrium to, towards uh, the hydroxyacetone phosphate, but the entropy may drive it towards glyceraldehyde triphosphate. Yeah, that's interesting, but but I'm I'm stretching the interpretation. But somehow that is kind of the beauty of docking that you can run quick experiments, interpret them, and then plan for the for an in vitro experiment or a higher uh, level of theory computational experiment. Crossing fingers for that we get phenol after PGA. Now PGA being a transition state analog, it should have the best infinity, but talking limited in terms of conformational changes and also, yeah, limited in the level of theory. We have a lot of results cluster in the first one, but still is um, not the best. 5.3, I think, minus 5.3 for the hydroxyacetone phosphate. That was the best. Aha, uh -huh. so nope, it didn't, the second ligand, uh, sorry, the ligand that I added, phenol, didn't get Q in this. But still, this is the way to do this type of dockings. I use an example that can be run on Bina, but it was modified to run in ADFR on a Linux machine. I honestly recommend doing this because unless you already know how to create scripts, e e batch scripts in Windows, you may have to spend some time figuring it out and adapting it to your needs. Whereas if you already learn how to do it on Linux, you will have an easier time moving your scripts as you're screening to production on cluster machines that already are running Linux. I'm going to copy my results over here to this Windows computer. Uh -huh. And that's it. PDBQT logout summary. Yeah, everything is here. Maybe I did, I made some mistakes with the names, uh, but here they are and we have them. And now we can disconnect from that remote computer. Well, thank you for watching. I hope this is useful for you to plan and decide how to run your scripts for docking and where is the source material and how I get it going. See you around. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. Maybe somebody else would need this and will benefit from having it. In the meantime, have, have a great day. Bye.